Well, good morning. We just got here at the south rim of the Grand Canyon to try to bag two summits in the Grand Canyon today. Coronado Butte first and Sinking Ship Butte. Shouldn't be super technical, but it's not gonna be super easy either. Obviously there's no trail for what we're doing today, so route finding will be a challenge. And uh, it's also August in Arizona, so as the day goes on, it's going to warm up quite a bit. So we don't wanna take our time necessarily today, but it feels good to be back in the Southwest and I can't wait to get my hands on some sand stuff. So our first objective in clear view, Coronado Butte. So obviously the trail cuts off to the right. We're gonna take the ridge line up and then we're gonna, on the summit block, we're gonna be moving right and looking for gully one, a third of the way, gully two. And I don't know if it's around the bend or if it's in view, but that's, that's where we're going. So we've made it down into the Coconino sandstone. We're about at the lowest point we'll be at all day. It's been a nice way to start the morning climbing down here. We've managed to avoid the sun so far, but once we get up onto the ridge of Coronado, it'll be sun the rest of the way. So we're on the ridge line, which connects Coronado to the rim. We're on the escarpment. It's a good sign when Michael puts his hiking poles away because that means starting to scramble. Yeah. So we're about to scramble our way into some limestone for the Coronado Summit. But we have some route finding to do before we get there, that's for sure. That's for sure. So this is like, I think, once we get up there, that's the full summit. Okay. And then we have to work our way around to the right, with the summit proper several hundred feet above, and we're gonna have to traverse east and north. All right.
looks pretty imposing from here. It does. Uh, So, I don't know if you mean the chalk stones here, and that's where we cut, right? It does say get into the gully and go up a third Ascend of the way. Ascend the first gully about a third. Walk around to the second gully, passing through some exposed sections, and head up, and head up another third of the summit. So, this is the first gully, and the beta says, get in the gully a third of the way up and then traverse right. But those ledges don't look too promising. So we're just gonna start climbing and just see what happens. So just above where Michael's climbing is the cliff band we kind of have to get out onto and traverse around the cliff and it looks very exposed. Hopefully this is the right way. That's the traverse. It goes like this and then we'll be under that roof cutting across. Nice, perfect. So just have your wits about you here because the fall is death. But yeah, you just don't want to slide anywhere. All right, going up goalie number two now. As there are a total of three goalies. All right, we're just below the summit block and now we get to pick our way up to this limestone to summit. So it's kind of just a pick and choose kind of deal here, it looks like. There's a lot of texture and angle, but it just- I love it. Yeah.
Well, summit of Coronado Butte. I'm not sure of the exact elevation, I'll put it on the screen, but it is actually higher than the south rim. I was just told today by Michael, so it's interesting. So we're at 7,100 feet. Get out in the canyon and get to a high point, get on these buttes in the canyon, just gives you just so much more of a panoramic view. Okay, so Coronado Butte, we're gonna climb down, go back up to the rim, get in our car, and make our way back somewhere over there and get on top of a uh, sunken ship. Yeah. Any weed in here? Uh, dried mushrooms, whatever. So let's see. <laughs> oh, before we head down, we gotta put our name in the register box. Yeah, meant to do that. First down too, you're not throwing spit rocks on anybody either, so. Yeah, exactly what I was thinking, yeah. And I'm used to you throwing rocks yeah. down at me, so it's just yeah, better this way. Rocks. Oh yeah, here, here we go. All right, well, we're off the ridge and now we're gonna climb up to the south rim and make our way over to the sunken ship butte, but uh, it is starting to warm up for sure. It's supposed to be 90 today on the rim. I don't even wanna know what it's like at the bottom, but. Uh, yeah, a, a buck 10. At least. So 
we're gonna march up up this. this michael calls this the death march but it's short so it really doesn't deserve death march but yes it's, it's unrelenting up for hopefully just about half an hour So hiking in Arizona, it gets extremely hot, obviously. It's gonna be about 90 today. And what I like to do is bring a completely frozen water bottle in my backpack. So by the time you're almost done with your hike or you get really hot, you can drink some really cold water and use it to cool you off, put it on your neck. But, because uh, the water goes quick when it warms up. Yeah. I was feeling great. You know, it felt like it was spring, you know, perfect breeze up there. It felt no more than 70 degrees. And, now it feels like it's 90. While we were going up, I was kind of secretly thinking to myself, if Michael doesn't want to do the next summit, I'm, I'm totally okay with that. No, I do. All right, back of the car. Now we're just going to drive up the road a little bit. All right, we're at parking lot number two, and now we're going to make our way over towards Sinking Ship Butte. So we're just coming off the south rim again. The sinking ship right over here. But, but looking back over here at Coronado Butte, the one we just summited. it. Well, we're just kind of traversing our, along the west wall here, looking for the, our little goalie we're supposed to go up, but we can't find it. Everything looks too sketchy. So we're thinking there's no way that's the actual way up, but it might be. Oh, no. Looking down on the first pitch. Well, we're back here at the car instead of the summit because I definitely overheated. <clears throat> After we climbed that technical part, we were about 50 feet from the summit. I just, it just hit me. I was just way overheated and I started cramping up and then we down climbed and I couldn't stop puking. So couldn't record on the way back either, but we got really close. Michael got even closer and I had to make him come down that sketchy crawl move with the extreme exposure. But we made it back safe. Today. And we're ending with 3,500 feet. It's a rude awakening for me coming back to Arizona. <laughs> that sun is no joke. I know it's disappointing to have to turn around from the summit. Usually I can see heat exhaustion coming, but this time it came out of nowhere. As soon as I started climbing on that wall, my muscles completely locked up. This just goes to show how fast things can go south in the Grand Canyon with that intense Arizona sun. Looking back, I didn't start the hike hydrated and that's what really did me in. Before you hike in the Grand Canyon, I recommend drinking at least 40 ounces of water at the trailhead before you even start the hike. This was just a warm-up hike for the Grand Canyon. Prime hiking season is around the corner and I will be back for some epic days. <laughs>